this lesson, we'll take a look at the Revit curtain wall and how it works inside of Revit. Just like all the other tools in Revit, there are properties and parameters that govern the way the curtain wall works. So the curtain wall tool is really just a wall. You can draw a curtain wall directly or draw a wall and change it to a curtain wall. So if I use my uh, wall command or a WA for a shortcut, uh, I can uh, start by drawing one of these uh, out of the box or these customized um, curtain walls. So I can use this one and I can draw it. And if I want to, I can click on it and I can change it uh, to a wall, just like anything else. Uh, or, this kind of doesn't look like a wall, or I can draw a wall and switch it to a curtain wall. Because in the end of the day, it really is just another wall. Alright, so let's go ahead and get rid of these. Let's we'll highlight them and delete. And so in Revit, in the out-of-the-box templates, you have a few uh, preset uh, curtain wall types. So if I go back to my wall command, I can see as I scroll down in my wall list, uh, some of these preset curtain wall types. Uh, but just like most of the other objects that we have in Revit, or the other tools, we can customize them and edit them. So let's draw one of them and see how we can customize it. And let's start maybe with this uh, A Custom storefront. So let's draw it. We'll draw something kind of wide. Let's go to a 3D view to take a look at it. So we can see here we have some uh, mullions on the outside. And as I click each one of them, it'll say curtain wall mullion. Uh, the overall thing that I grab is the wall itself, the curtain wall A custom. Uh, we additionally have inside here we have an actual curtain panel. And so we don't have any grid set up in this one. If I wanted to, I could hit the curtain grid and I could place you know, multiple grids. And notice each time I place a grid, uh, a mullion sets in it, and that's typical of this type of curtain system. We'll explain that as we go along. But so now I have more individual curtain panels, and I have mul mul more mullions. So let's start with the uh, type properties, and then we'll uh, adjust the instant properties at the end. So let's click on this, and we'll click Edit Type. Let's center this a little bit. And so at the top of the properties dialog box, we have the uh, typical wall property, uh, like functions, uh, like a, uh, whether it's a function of exterior or interior. Uh, we have the join condition. Um, we have this checkbox for automatically embed. If you saw on the uh, previous lesson, uh, we had that storefront that was embedded inside the wall. This is a good one to check because in most situations with a, a glazing system, it's either going to sit in a wall or it's going to sit by itself. So having that embed option is, is usually a good one to have. The next sort of important one is this uh, curtain panel parameter. And here what it's doing is it's selecting the default curtain panel type that infills in the wall when you create different grids or you create a, an entire wall. So by default, whenever I uh, lengthen this wall and add more grids or when I just draw this from scratch, the curtain panel that gets put into this wall is this glazed system panel. So below those uh, construction parameters, we have uh, the vertical grid, horizontal grid, uh, vertical mullions, and horizontal mullion uh, parameters. So these grid groups, these uh, vertical grid and horizontal grid parameters, allow us to set the sort of spacing or, or dimensional controls for the actual mullions. So let me, let me demo this a little bit. I'm going to set up my um, type properties box a little bit. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to slide this over. Now let's get rid of these uh, grids real quick. And so if I wanted to, I could actually just click on each one of these mullions individually and delete them. But it's going to be pinned. So the easier way to do it is to grab the grid, which I tab to, and click those one at a time. And I want to kind of explain how this all works. So let's go back to the edit type and let's set these grids. So right now they're set to none. That's what's kind of allowing me to customize this, those grids as I go. But say I set this to a fixed distance and I set it to two feet and I hit apply. So what it's going to do is it's going to create a fixed distance, that two foot spacing no matter what. Or I could do a fixed number and I could say um, when I hit OK, it would, when I click on it, I could set the number of uh, vertical grid spacings. So if I change this, it would always be uh, three mullions, uh, no matter how long I, I drag this. Let's go back to edit type. And obviously I can do the same thing for the horizontal grids. I can set a fixed distance or a fixed number. And additionally you have maximum spacings and minimum spacings that, minimum spacings that you can work with. Now I typically uh, like to customize the 
the mullions and the, and the curtain walls that I'm working with, uh, when you set up these uh, specific spacings, uh, the moment you want to put a mullion in there that's not part of that specific spacing, the system kind of malfunctions a little bit inside of Revit. So I always find it easier to do these nuns, set these as none, and that way I can draw each one that I want to individually as I go along and, and put it in the right spot and go from there to there. Uh, but the, definitely the max, the, the fixed spacings uh, do work well. So if you do want to use those, give it a try. I would test them out and see which works best for you. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And when I hit apply, I'm going to get a warning error that's telling me, hey, you set this to none. I've got grid lines in here already. Do you want to use them or not? And I'm just going to go ahead and, go ahead and hit delete because I don't want them. And we'll go down to these vertical mullions and horizontal mullions. And so what these are doing are these are setting the default types for the type of mullions to put in each one of these situations. So for vertical mullions, whenever I put a vertical mullion in the interior of the wall, it's going to use this mullion type. Along the border 1, which is, I believe, the bottom, but it might be the top. I always get them confused. It's going to use this type of mullion. And on the other border, it's going to use this type of mullion. The same thing goes for horizontal. If I do a horizontal mullion in here, horizontal grid, by default, it will place this type of mullion. The same thing goes with the uh, the sides, the, uh, the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and try some of these out. Notice that we have some different mullions in here. So I'm going to put a... Two by a two and a half by eight inch uh, vertical mullion. So when I hit OK and I go to place a curtain grid, notice that I get that two by eight mullion. Now a lot of people have problems when they work with uh, curtain walls the first time. They they go back to this and they want ah oh, I want to place a mullion. I want to place a mullion. Well the only place you can place a mullion is on a curtain grid. You can't just do them randomly. So you have to place that curtain grid and then you can place the mullion. So again. Notice that I did that 2 by 8. If I go back to uh, the type properties and I change this from a 2.5 by 8 inch to none and I hit OK, it's going to ask me to delete that mullion because again I got these governing controls that are telling me I have to use this type of mullion in this situation and as soon as I change it, it's saying OK, well the default now is a none but I got a mullion there so uh, I got to get rid of that so we'll hit delete. But so I had that grid in there, so if I wanted to now I can click mullion and place a mullion. And this is going to let me place any mullion I want. So we'll do that. I'll just click one by default and I can change it as we go along. So let's undo this real quick. I want to show another thing that happens here. Let's go back to the type properties. And let's change this back from none to maybe the 2.5 by 5 inch. And let's hit OK. And let's draw in a couple more curtain grids again. And again, by default, it's putting in that those two and a half by five inch mullions, and it's doing that curtain panel, that default curtain panel that we showed. And again, I could go in and change each one of these mullions, but it's putting in a default one for me. So if I click on this mullion and I want to change it, notice it's it's, it's graying it out for me because it's pinned. So this kind of goes back to these whole governing controls about curtain walls. When you set default values for these. It's going to put those default values in your curtain wall, and it's going to pin them for you. It's going to lock it in. It doesn't mean you have to stick with it. So say I want this individual mullion to be a larger mullion. I can unpin it and then change it. But just know the moment that you unpin it, it loses all those governing values, and I can't overwrite them uh, globally with those default values. So say I wanted to globally change the interior horizontal mullions from uh, two and a half by five inch maybe to one and a half by two and a half inches and I hit apply so notice all these other ones got smaller but this one didn't because I unpinned it and I removed those governing controls from it so just remember that about curtain walls and so just like the mullions and switching those out I can also switch out the curtain panels themselves so if I click on a panel and unpin it I can go from a glazed to uh, maybe a solid, you know, so it's it's not transparent anymore. It's a solid, or even a an empty one, and there's no no panel in there at all. We're gonna learn later in in the course about um, customizing curtain panels, and later in this module we'll learn about customizing some mullions. But again, all these can kind of fit in here, and you can play, and you can set default values to these curtain walls. So when you're setting up a curtain wall that you want to use, what I would do is I would I would 
set up, do an edit type, create your duplicate and call it what you want and then set these preset values and hopefully you don't have to change them as you go along but if you want to you can. Just know that your curtain wall is going to act based upon all of these setups. The vertical grids, the horizontal grids, the spacings which I recommend setting to none and then these mullions which I would recommend setting to whatever you need them to. So let's hit OK and then lastly let's look at some of the instance properties for this wall. So notice that I set the uh, grids in here earlier because I had that spacing but it's grayed out now because it doesn't matter because they're all set to none and I can I can control them uh, on my own. But additionally I can change the angle of these grids. So this vertical grid right now is set to a zero. If I wanted to I can type in 10 degrees and they would rotate them for me. Um, I could create an offset from the grid line so notice they're going to move a foot. If I set it back to zero, they're going to move back. And I can do the same thing for the horizontal grids. I can even set the uh, value to a negative 10. It will rotate, which is pretty fun. Uh, if I didn't want to do a, a 90 degree thing, maybe I said 20 degrees. And uh, Now I believe what it does is it, it, it updates both of them for us uh, because you typically have to work with those 90 degrees. But it's 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 a fun system to kind of try out. Uh, again, you're kind of limited to, to grids. Uh, but a lot of the time when you're working with storefront and curtain wall, you typically are dealing with grids. And that was Revit's intent when they made this. So the last thing I'll show is, again, a little bit more about these curtain grids. I talked about how you can click on the grids to delete them. If I hit undo, if I wanted to accidentally just not accidentally, but maybe I just want to delete this one mullion. I can unpin it and I can delete it, but that grid's still there and it's showing a joint. Now say I didn't want this joint. Say I wanted this big piece of glass and I thought that removing that mullion would remove the whole joint. That's not typically how Revit makes this work. So what I could do is I can click on the grid and I can click this add remove segment and then click on this segment and now I have a grid that goes through but that segment isn't there. I can do the same thing uh, you know, maybe here. So now I got this sort of L-shaped piece of glass, or uh, I think it's in there now. Yeah, it's like it's glazing. So that's how you can mess around with with creating maybe mold your own type uh, aesthetics with your storefront or playing with uh, different openings. Uh, but you can get a little creative with your curtain wall uh, mullions and your panels uh, within these boundaries. And just remember that there are governing controls and default things that are going to go in there. But I think it's a pretty awesome tool.